All right, everybody, this is Ross. So in today's video, I thought I would take you guys around the yard and show you guys different trees, different fruiting plants that I have, whether that's the grapevines, um, some of the bushes that might be growing, some of these fruit trees, like these are cherries and apples and pears and persimmons, all the different things that I grow here on this property. I thought I would touch on pruning each individual one. Uh, we're not gonna get to all of them, but what I wanna really go over is things like form, what the trees look like, kind of things you shouldn't do. This is all gonna be about winter pruning, by the way. And there's really two different types of pruning. I guess you could really narrow it down to winter pruning and summer pruning. And I would actually argue for the majority of the species that you guys can grow um, in a more temperate climate like my own in the Philadelphia area, I would say you're probably your best bet is actually to do some summer pruning and to really stay on top of that. Uh, that's gonna really help with a lot of us throughout the country that have disease pressure. Maybe you guys have a lot of pest pressure. Uh, it's gonna really keep these trees in a state of uh, size control for us that are backyard growers. And it's also gonna really help with uh, getting ourselves a good fruit set every year. When we do a lot of winter pruning, and you know, it's not technically, I guess, really the winter right now, or we're approaching the spring very quickly. There are some trees on my property that have broken bud. And yeah, you could argue that, I guess it's not really the winter time at that point anymore, but certainly if you're doing pruning when the tree is still semi-dormant or dormant, you're gonna then contribute towards the following season or during the growing season, having a lot of growth. Um, that's kind of the tree's natural response. We change the hormones within the tree, actually. When we do our pruning, we are directly impacting the hormones in these trees and in these fruiting plants. So that's really what you need, I think, to take that perspective going into all of this, is what exactly is it that we're doing? We're really just changing the hormones. And by doing this in the winter, we're changing the hormones in a way that is promoting growth, promoting vigor for the next season. And for a lot of us, that might not be something we really want. Um, in the summer, instead, on a lot of these fruiting plants, we actually are gonna be promoting flower and producing budwood or uh, spurs or wood that actually has uh, flowers or fruit buds on it. So that's really key there. I think that little distinction there in terms of the difference. Now these are cherries. These are on semi-dwarf stock. And what I really don't like about these trees after I've been pruning them for a number of years, you know, I didn't know all of the things I, I know today when I first started. As I learned, I got more knowledge and I've learned from my mistakes. And I'll tell you that these cherry trees have a pretty good form, but only in this, area of the tree. Ideally, this area here should be a couple feet lower and that you can see all this really good branching up in here. It's really forming a nice dense canopy after years of finally pruning them back a bit harder than I um, would have really anticipated from the beginning. Um, in the wintertime, they then start to put out all these different shoots, all these different growth points that then form really the canopy I wanted. And a big recommendation for anyone in, the, in a backyard environment is that we wanna prune them when you first get them as a whip, right? You're just starting out. Maybe you guys are not at this point yet, is you wanna prune them at your knee. And that's gonna create the branching down below, but sometimes you don't get exactly all the branching that you want. It doesn't branch out as much as you need. Like this tree here, I did exactly that, and it only put out two different branches, maybe three different branches. And for me, that's just not enough because we really want this big dense canopy a lot lower. And you can see as I get higher up on the tree, there's one, two, three, four, maybe even five, you know, main scaffolds to this tree. I'm gonna zoom in, bring you guys closer. These main scaffolds that I'm, I'm looking at here are really what are gonna produce the main fruit from you know going forward so if i have more of these scaffolds and i have them in a higher quantity but i have them at a lower point we're going to be better off with 
size control. I mean, that's a really big point, I think. You know, you got the trunk down here, and then it forks off, and you could say that, oh, well, these are scaffolds. But really, technically, as we go up higher, you could even make an argument that these four branches here are really the main scaffolds. Um, and then from there, of course, we get this diverse, dense canopy here with all the fruit buds on it. And you can see, you know, this is kind of a great time to do the pruning because you can very clearly see what's a fruit bud and what's a knot. And you know, <laughs> what's a knot? But, you know, this is a, obviously a fruit bud if you can see all those different buds there in a cluster. You know, these are cherries and every fruiting plant, unfortunately, you're going to have to learn how exactly they behave and what they look like. But one of the most surefire ways to know what is a flower cluster or what will be actually a fruit is just to wait until they start to break bud. Now that tree obviously hasn't just yet. I'm really quite surprised even though technically I would say around early to mid-March we do start to see bud break here. I'm actually quite surprised to see it as early as we have this year simply just because of the, the very cold um, weather we've been having and it just turned warm and all it really took was that warm snap of weather to really get uh, these trees breaking bud. Now I'll show you, this was one area here that I really like to talk about is actually the, the espalier. For a home gardener, the espalier just can't be beat in my opinion. I think it's beautiful, it functions in so many different ways and it also produces a ton of fruit. Now these peach trees have been here I think for six or seven, this might be their seventh year. I'm not, I don't remember exactly how many years it's been. But the point is, is that they really have a beautiful uh, form to them and that they have the arms going out and it's not perfect. You know, there's some gaps in here and actually I had to cut out a couple scaffolds. Um, not a couple scaffolds, a couple arms on the cordons here. It's supposed to be three tiers, right? There's a tier down here, there's a tier in the middle and there's a tier at the top. Unfortunately, if you don't do this really uh, the best way in the right way from the beginning and you kind of make a few maybe you make a few mistakes and you don't go back and correct it you could actually have a situation like myself where you actually had to cut out some of the arms and I cut them out because the wood was dead and the reason why the wood was dead is because this growth up here or maybe even this growth down here is then shading out that growth and anything that gets shaded in the, let's say the center or the bottom of the tree is going to just die. It's just the tree is not going to want to put the energy in to support that anymore. So it's going to be gone and uh, really the main pruning I've done not just on these but the trees we, we can you know we just looked at those cherry trees I really just came in here and really thinned out some of that density. I don't want a lot of this dense wood. We came in here obviously we looked at here actually is some branching that I missed that's dead or diseased or damaged in some way that's obviously got to come out but really I think at this point, once you get your tree somewhat established, after we, you know, we cut it back at the knee, we get the form that we want, let's say, maybe it's in this style here where we're not gonna cut it back at the knee. We're gonna let the single stem whip grow all the way to the top of the wire, and then we're gonna cut it, and then we're gonna let it branch out and tie those main branches down to that wire. But regardless of how you're doing this, um, once you have this really set up, I think the winter pruning is really just for opening up the center a bit more. If you have a lot of branching, especially up here towards the top that's really dense and thick, we gotta remove some of that. And I took out some really big cuts and that was mostly it. I got my saw and I made bigger cuts. That makes a bigger difference than just coming in here and doing some very fine detail pruning. Um, you can't necessarily go too hard with this because there's so much fruit wood here. I mean, all of this down here, pretty much at my head level down, has got fruit on it. And it's, uh, it's in huge abundance. So I wouldn't necessarily worry. I know some people come into the winter pruning or the pruning at this time of the year and they think, oh, I don't want to go too hard with my pruning because I'm gonna lose all my fruit. Well, when your tree is established, you're gonna have more fruit than you know what to do with. So I wouldn't think about it like that. I would really think about it in terms of, well, when I make this cut, how is the tree gonna respond in terms of growth? And if you have a lot of growth, let's say at the top, and you're just doing some thinning, 
it's not going to be a big deal because, well, you've already got branches that have that dominance, right? The highest branches on the trees have that apical dominance. That's that hormone that I'm talking about. If you make those cuts, you change those hormones, then now the tree then struggles to find a difference in dominance or maybe there's competing branches. So for me, that's all it really was. I came in here at the top, I made a couple cuts, took out some of the dead wood. I'm still seeing some dead wood. Um, you know, I came over here at the top, took out some of those branches. We even just trimmed this back a little bit so that this isn't encroaching too far outwards away from the fence. And, uh, and that was mostly it. I mean, it's, uh, it's really that simple. What I should do for the future, and I could, I guess, if I really wanted to, is cut out everything up here and make just a cut right up in here. And I could really pay attention to in the future is in the summer, keep doing my summer pruning. If I don't want to make these trees so tall, now these are almost 20 feet tall. Uh, you know, certainly at least 15. So if they're 15 feet tall and I'm saying to myself, I can't reach some of the fruit up here, I need a ladder. Well, you know, it is what it is. I have to either change my strategy or just deal with it. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to get on a ladder, doesn't want to have to deal with this, there's a lot of fruit up here. Maybe I could leave it for the birds. Maybe I could leave it for the animals or whatnot. But, you know, in my experience, it's probably better and I wish I knew this from the past is I probably could have just made a cut all the way across the top and just keep everything nice and pruned as the summer progresses. Don't let anything get away from you and that controls the size and also produces budwood for next year. It's not like, or I should say fruiting wood for next year, it's not like I'm gonna lose out. I mean, all this stuff down here on these lower tiers is bent over, got the nice angle to it. It's filled with fruits, filled with flowers I should say and I'll be fine. I don't really have to worry too much. Now we go over here to the grapes. It's a pretty different story. I mean, of course we have our level of permanence, right? We've got ourselves a trunk. We then put out some scaffolds. And we, we have that permanence that we can always come back to or build off of. The grapevine's quite similar and it you know, really does depend on how you want to do it, but I got myself my main trunk. I have myself my two arms along the wire. And then along the wire, I have myself the spurs. And along these spurs, I just keep cutting them back to maybe one or two buds. And every year, the, the spurs get a little bit longer, a little bit taller, and, uh, and that's it. With grapes, you really do have to worry about pruning them too early, simply because a lot of the wood can um, dry out and desiccate in the wintertime. So it's definitely advised to wait until about now, kind of right before bud break. So um, my apples are kind of a similar story. I mean, this is a little bit different though in, in terms of they're dwarf, they're very dwarf. They're not like the semi-dwarfs we looked at with those cherries in the beginning. You know, those cherries will get to maybe 15 feet. You know, these peaches here will get to about 30. These are standard sized trees, but these apples you know, some of them are on different rootstock. You can tell this guy over here is approaching a much taller height than the rest of them. But for the most part, in this high density that I have them planted in, you really just want to be careful about thinning them out, not letting them get too tall, keeping them uh, a bit shorter. I really do believe that the same principles can be said for those cherries. And I made the same mistakes on these apples where we just didn't prune them hard enough in the earlier years. We really didn't bring them back to get the branching that we wanted at a lower height. And they're a bit lanky because of it. Now there's a few reasons for that. A lack of knowledge, the location that they're in, but some of these more lanky uh, branches here, the same thing could be said in the summer and in the winter time is that if we do a lot of pruning now, we're gonna get a lot of growth next year. However, if I you know, really stay on top of my summer pruning, it's not out of the question where I can keep these guys to a very reasonable height, very compact and exactly what we want. Now here's actually some, some younger espalier trees that we have against the fence. These are plums. 
And we did also, a, we did a really good job this time around getting my plums to the right shape, uh, getting them bent down here along the wire. They all have the right uh, thing going on here. And you can see we've got the arms perfectly laid out. Um, this guy here is going to probably struggle a little bit to get some growth this year. But for the most part, I would say this is the only, only the weakest arm of the trees, these two trees here. We got it to the appropriate height and then we chopped it off at that height. As soon as that whip gets to the height that you want, it then starts to send out shoots. And of course, we got one shoot on the right, one shoot on the left. We tie them down to the wire. And there you have a very beautiful start to uh, an espalier. And I didn't prune these guys yet. What's nice about pruning plums right now is that they just broke bud. And I can very clearly see where the fruits are gonna be. I also don't wanna have too much fruit on these trees. They're very young. Um, however, I'm not gonna be at this location forever and I probably will be taking these standard plums with me. So um, I'm gonna let them fruit probably as much as I can get out of them. And then I'm gonna take them, dig them up, take them with me, and uh, kind of worry about the overall progression of the tree at some later year. But certainly uh, I think these longer shoots, particularly the ones that don't have a ton of fruit on them, um, like this guy here and this guy here, usually the, the more lanky, taller shoots don't have a ton of fruit on them. That's actually how the hormones work, is that when we have branches that are more straight up in the air, they're more inclined to grow and less inclined to actually produce fruit. So a big rule of thumb, I think, with pruning fruit trees in general is that take out the really uh, vigorous, lanky shoots. Uh, they usually don't have a ton of fruit on them anyway. So what's the point of having them? Um, unless you don't have enough photosynthesis, which is pretty rare. So um, I'm gonna come in here, believe it or not, I'm gonna take out probably all of these, prune them back to maybe a couple nodes, and try to keep all these branches here at about the same height. Um, same thing over here, is that way when they're all at the same height, they all have a similar distinct advantage at achieving dominance, right? We can form a better canopy that way. Rather than having one shoot that's just way above the rest, suppressing the others, preventing a mess in some way. All right, let's keep going. Um, I wanna show you guys more of the stone fruits really quickly. I mean, if anything, I think you guys could really use, you know, a lesson from this, this video is kind of what not to do. You know, some of my trees, knowing this, knowing what I know now in the future, they're gonna look so much better and so much uh, different, but you know, these are great examples, I guess, of kind of what not to do. And I, if I really want, if I had a tree like this, this is a pretty good one here, actually. This apricot, it's called Tomcot. It's really one of my favorites. It's so good. But uh, it's not exactly pruned here at my knee. As you can see, this is a bit taller, maybe at my, my hip or the top of my thigh. But it has really good branching here at a lower height. And you can see there's one, two, three, four. We got four scaffolds and actually it's pretty, it's forming a nice vase shape to it. Um, it's got that umbrella look to it. Now there is some more vigorous lanky shoots over here we can obviously get rid of. And especially now that I see, look, there's all those fruit buds. So wherever the fruit is, pretty much can take all that out. Um, and it's, it's kind of interesting how these apricots are fruiting is that they're kind of just fruiting on the ends. And I really had never uh, known that. So it seems like on the tips of the branches, that apricot is really fruiting. And again, that's why you don't want to get too carried away maybe without seeing the fruit. It seems like these plums are fruiting here on the spurs and also on the new growth from last year. Um, it's important to know what the habit of fruiting is that these trees may have, right? Like your peaches, your nectarines, they're gonna fruit on last year's growth. The cherries are gonna fruit, let's say on two or three year old wood. 
So you really got to be patient and form a particular, you know, situation. And some of this really tall, lanky stuff has just got to go. You can see how lanky all this is, even with some summer pruning. Um, it really wasn't enough. I really need to come in here and get rid of these very, very lanky shoots, bring them back, keep them under control for the future. But at this point, I think if there's fruit on my trees, considering I'm moving soon, that just is what it is. I'll just try to get as much out of them as I can and correct the form later. But that's kind of my little lesson here, guys, on the, uh, the pruning of these trees. You know, we made a cut the prior winter right here. And then here's all these new shoots that came up out of that. And that's because when we do the winter pruning, this is all very vigorous and it likes to grow and grow and grow. And of course it did grow and grow and grow. And therefore, I really don't even see any fruit on this tree. I'm gonna be honest with you. There's very little fruit because a lot of this growth is so vigorous. Um, they're almost like water shoots and it really didn't serve any purpose. If I would actually had come in here and let's say I made my cut here and I did my summer pruning at about here all the way across, then maybe I would have actually stopped this tree from being so vigorous, even branching out a bit more and maybe I would actually have some more fruit on it. So I know this, this takes some time. Obviously these are younger trees, but you know, um, those are some really good tips guys. I hope that everybody out there is planting. This is the time as well. You're getting everything together and uh, everybody staying happy, safe, safe and healthy. All right, so get out there guys. This is the time. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care.